Well, there's that. Give people a few minutes. To go live on Facebook or not to go live on Facebook? That is the question. I can't remember what I usually do with these. Yeah, we'll go live on the Facebook. Right, I think I'm live on Facebook. Let me just check here. Yeah, all right, there's my face. All right, uh, first of all, it seems like uh, there must be some nice weather out there or something because uh, uh, nobody's attending this class. Wah, wah, wah. Um, so we're just gonna put it out there on Facebook. You guys can watch this whenever the weather turns to crap um which uh doesn't look like it's gonna be anytime soon but you know, this is uh covering something that is near and dear to my heart uh and based on the attendance not just today but generally for this particular class i'm the only one uh which is using command to track and grow your business how we can uh use this to help you start to uh take over some additional things in your business so you can add some predictability uh, and um, maybe a little bit more of long-term growth goals as well. So uh, as always, we're actually logged into my real uh, command so I can show you exactly how uh, an agent would, would work themselves within command. Before we get going, I wanted to show you a couple of things. First, uh, the, the handouts that we have for this class or handouts that we have. Uh, this is uh, a somewhat incomplete one uh, because I don't have that much uh, experience yet with the team functionality uh, due to my own personal current lack of, of team. Uh, so uh, I do have a productivity coaching account uh, that I have access to that does have the team functionality. So we will be adding on to this. Uh, that being said, uh, as it stands right now, this is the handout uh, and we'll be covering opportunities. I know we've done that in the past. We're going to go a little more high level for you. Uh, we're also going to take a look at our connect profile, which is what other agents see, which is important for you when it comes to referrals. We're going to dive into referrals as well. And uh, the last thing is to go into reports. Teams are coming soon uh, so that you can start to track your business and see where you are in terms of your goals and man realtors do not want to talk about their goals and reaching or for most of us not reaching those goals anywho where do you find these handouts a couple places uh so i'm just going to pull them up first uh if you go to uh if you have google calendar 
definitely add a calendar. You could add multiple calendars to it. Uh, add a calendar for the uh, market centers. KW Market Center is the name of it. Uh, once you've added that calendar, you just add them using this plus icon and searching for it. Once you've added it, you just toggle it on by clicking the uh, the checkbox there, and now all of the classes, uh, boom, there they are. Uh, so uh, what you would go to is this class, which is uh, command, and all the documents are right here for the classes one, one, two, three, four. Uh, so we're on class four. Another place you can find them is in the uh, the Geek Squad uh, Facebook page. Um, if you'll just give me a moment here. I'm just going to go over to Geek Squad. Go to this bad boy. Go to the Geek Squad page. And in files, you'll find them all right here. All right. Class one, class two, class three, class four. Boom. Beautiful. All right. So that's where you go to find all of those handouts. Uh, you might have to have a little patience if it requires permission from me. I'm trying to. Make sure that doesn't happen anymore, but you know, technology, you know. Uh, anywho, let's get let's get rolling. So uh, let me just close out some of these tabs here. All right, uh, opportunities. Opportunities, uh, you should have some degree of familiarity with if you've done any transaction uh in command at all so you've been a keller williams agent uh and done any transactions in the last i don't know six or seven months then you should have already done at least some of the basic uh um uh opportunities transactional paperwork kind of thing i'm not really going to go over the docusign and adding documents to a transaction that's covered in class two we're going to look at a higher level adding predictability to your business, figuring out where your business is coming from, likelihood of closing, likelihood of you getting paid, uh, and what your probable income will be. So uh, I'm going to go on over to opportunities. And so we're opened up to my opportunities. If you've been using this strictly for transactional purposes, just to add a contact, create the opportunity so you can add the paperwork and get paid, you're probably looking maybe only at active or possibly even under contract uh, in these two uh, different phases. Um, we're going to start looking at beforehand, which adds a degree of predictability. So uh, we're going to go to my Cultivate listings. And what we have here are three different stages that are totally editable, watch, nurture, hot. These are the pre-created ones within command. They're ones that I'm used to using because my previous CRM had the same labels. For me, I interpret hot as ready to go right now. Nurture as, you know, two to six months range, three to six months, uh, and watch uh, six to 12 months. Uh, I also, no matter what someone says to me in terms of when they want to sell, I just cut it in half. So they say, I'm really about, I think I'm three or four months away. To me, they're hot. Uh, they're really one to two months away. So I would I'd put them in that particular category. Um, and then uh, they have a potential uh, list price. You can add that in. Uh, and they also have a probability factor. Uh, you can always do this by editing the stages here. Click edit stages and you can change around. So if somebody says they're watch, I have a 5% chance of closing them, 7% for nurture, 10% for hot. Uh, and then the percentages go up as people move along what we call the sales pipeline to appointment, then to active under contract. And obviously once they hit closing, it's 100%. Um, now uh, you can also see that within these stages, I have a checklist. I'm just going to click on these items right now, and I can ensure that I'm adding them to a new contact eight by eight, uh, that I have another long-term smart plan set up for them, and that I'm 
going to reach out to them and try to connect with them on social media, friend requests and, and the like. So uh, as people get these opportunities added uh, to their contact, then I'm also going through and checking off uh, each one of these things. I'll, I'll show you real life how uh, how that would operate. Um, and that, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. This all this stuff is customized where you can add uh, stages. Um, so these three stages are watch, nurture, hot. If you want to have four, uh, you want to have two, you want to change the names, you just edit them or delete them as things go along. In fact, for appointments, um, I, I think I've even gotten rid of some. So mine might even look different in, in appointments uh, than it would for mine than it does for yours. So I think I have a couple right here, um, active and so on. Da, 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 da. All right. And all you would do is as, uh, no matter where somebody is, as they're moving along the sales pipeline, you just drag and drop. Uh, so if I have, if I enter negotiations on this one, when I slide on over here, uh, if uh, like Nicole Williams listening, we're actually under contract. So all I'm doing is dragging it and ho hovering over under con contract and dropping it in there. So now it disappeared. If I go over under contract, I'm going to see that Nicole Williams is there. I'm actually going to put her back in active for the time being. Um, and she's going to end up on a legacy from here. All right. Uh, the other things I can do, oops, actually, uh, let me go back here. Go down this checklist. We've done that. So I'm just checking things off. I request a referral with friends on social media. I boosted it and I had a fat. So I'm, all, I'm actually all done with that. So six out of six. Perfect. So I just check those off. Uh, let me um, do this one right here. Ooh, I keep doing that. My apologies. Uh, so for Noah, um, request referral, check that off. Now I could also check off client update. And what will happen is an automatic email will go out to Noah saying, hey, this is what we've done. Just it's it's a, it's a pre-written email and uh, it just is like a bullet point of we requested a referral. We you know, scheduled a stager. Um, that's been done. Property is staged. Scheduled the photographer. Done. Has not yet been photographed. Photograph. Sign is not yet installed. No, no, no. Boom. So that's that's all I do is I go through these opportunities, check things off as they need to be checked off, and move them along the sales pipeline. And what you'll start doing, I'm just going to go back here, is it'll start telling you how much money you're likely to make. And if you convert everything in your pipeline, how much you will make uh, to definitely light the fire under you that uh, I currently have about 250,000 GCI sitting in my pipeline. So Ryan, why are you so busy getting new leads when really all you should be doing is focusing in on the opportunities that are out there and converting them? Based on my own conversion rates, I am likely to get 45,000 here. So, so uh, I, what was that? About $120,000. I'm likely to get based on uh, my own conversion rates and how likely a transaction is to close. So we're going to focus in on the potential income. This not, potential will not change, but I'm going to move Nicole Williams uh, back over to under contract and see the probable changes, which is four, five, 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 five. All right. So she's an active. We're going to move her under contract because that's where she really is. And let's go back to opportunities and see. So my probable income has increased because that transaction has moved further along the sales pipeline and is therefore more likely to close. All right. So what you're able to do is you're able to start really uh, tracking your probable income based on your conversion rates, your potential income. Now, I'll, you know for a lot of them, I don't have anything entered yet because I need, in some cases, I don't have an idea of how much stuff home is worth. Uh, so usually right, right about the time I get to a, an appointment is when I'm starting to add all of these uh, these in to all the potential income and uh, you know the potential sale price and things like that. Um, 
I have another one right here that I wanted to mess around with. Uh, so I have uh, this particular buyer. This is real life. Uh, I had a conversation with her and, uh, you know, Tamara said, uh, you know, really appreciated uh, meeting up with me. They decided to rent for the next 18 months. Now they, because they're renting for 18 months, that means they're not likely to be buying in the next 12. So to me, what is happening here is this is becoming a lost opportunity, a lost opportunity. So I'm going to hit that right there. And the reason I am doing that is because I want command to know that I failed to convert this so that we can continue down the road, what command will be able to do, the plan is that it will uh, start to automatically update my own conversion rates to give me a real life, not just Ryan entered the likelihood uh, that uh, this transaction would get to closing, but say, hey, based on your own performance, 25% of the appointments you take get to closing. So, uh, and that's because I'm being uh, super forthright in terms of losing an opportunity. So I'm gonna save that there and you will see that tomorrow's opportunity is now gone. Wow, wow. And beyond that, my potential income has gone down, my probable income has gone down, and so on. All right, so that's that's how things uh, work within opportunities at a higher level. So we're not just talking about adding paperwork and getting paid and, and, and all that transactional stuff. We're talking about taking the time every week to add the new opportunities to your sales pipeline and to touch base with these people and move them along the sales pipeline. Uh, so really, like, honestly, the bulk of what I do is I'm only talking to the, the, these people uh, who are um, in the sales pipeline, whether cultivate or closed, because the ones who close are likely to give me a referral. Uh, so th this is where I'm focusing in on right now. I'm not necessarily, I do lead generate all the time, uh, as far as my day-to-day -day efforts, I'm focusing on the conversion of these cultivates and appointments to business and getting those pieces of business closed. And I time block, using my schedule, I time block uh, the heck out of that. And I have other systems in place to reach out to those, uh, those leads who are not yet interacting with us. So that is the using of opportunities at a higher level. You can completely customize this to your own business with the checklists and the phases and stages and all that stuff uh, by just going in and making those edits. Real quickly, I just wanna show you, let's just go to the buyer appointments here. Um, once again, we can go in here and edit. We can uh, add a stage. I can remove a stage or I can edit a stage. That includes uh, checklist items. Uh, I can set the client updates and I can edit the probability that these, uh, that these contacts will lead to closing. So uh, you can base this on your own performance. Keep in mind to you know, stay honest with yourself in terms of how likely it is somebody's gonna close so that you can add that degree of predictability that you want to your business. All right. So uh, that is um, opportunities at a higher level. Now let's take a look at uh, referrals. Uh, first thing when it comes to referrals is uh, getting your profile set up. This is a profile that is visible to Keller Williams agents only within the command ecosystem. The place you would go to edit them is click on your name and then go to profile. This is your connect Profile. I last time I went in and just edited the profile to say I am the man. Now I will add to that due to my love of tacos and my taco shirt. I am the man. I provide after every closing. Now. You can also decide what you want to opt into in terms of what is visible to others. I can save the changes. 
and my edits are there now as well. Seven years at KW. Man, time flies. Now, this is what is actually visible to other agents as they are looking to, uh, and obviously I want to update this for real. At some point, I keep adding it to, to my to-do list. Uh, and this is what other agents can see as they are looking for referrals. Now, in today's you know command world, uh, this is not um, a place where, like how we used to just go on to like these Facebook groups and say, hey, who do I know in whatever, Birmingham, Alabama, uh, and you would get bombarded with recommendations. Now, now we can actually just do our own research to figure out who it is that we want to refer our business to in Birmingham, Alabama. So uh, I was in Connect, I'm moving myself back on over to Command here, and we're gonna go to Referrals. We're just gonna go through this uh, in a couple of different ways. Uh, first, uh, this is my referral network of 140 other Keller Williams agents. Uh, what I've done is whether it's, I might have somebody who's interested in buying in a particular location and I find my referral partner there, they might reach out to me if I have potential referral here. Uh, when command first started going, you know, we just got all these referral requests left and right. And I've kind of had to go through and remove some people that might've accepted because I didn't really know what I was doing back then. So uh, the way you would uh, add a person to your referral network is you probably want to you know, know a little bit about this other agent. I find it, this is just me personally, I find it easiest to go to a map and search by, you know, let's just say uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, boom. So now the map will go over to Las Vegas and on the right hand side here, what you're seeing is uh, the agents who have been doing business in that particular um, city. I'm going to zoom in here. And what you're gonna see is everything sort of changing on the right hand side. So we've eliminated, because we got closer, we eliminated uh, quite a bunch of agents. And I is right now it's set to uh, random. What I can do is if I have a specific agent in mind, I can search them. Uh, I could sort it in alphabetical order and find them that way. That being said, I'm more likely to search for them based on their production. I have clients in here in the North Shore moving to Vegas, and they need a good buyer agent who's done a lot of production there. So I'm going to go to the number of buy sides. And now we're going to sort by this you know, particular um, category of buy size. If I had uh, a contact of mine who was looking to um, uh, sell a home, then I might go to number of list sides or something like that. We'll zoom in a little bit more here. I don't know, I don't too much about Vegas, so I'm just, uh, they're just top of mind. I have a great referral partner out there as well. And I'm trying to get it down to under a hundred agents as well. Oop, maybe it's under 50 agents. All right, so once you clear under 50 agents, what you can do is you can sort by these agents right here. Uh, Sandy McDuffie is uh, my go-to, if you're curious. Uh, she's awesome. And when she closes a transaction, she sends you a book. I like it. Uh, anyway, um, and I can just send her a referral automatically. That's where this little icon is right here. Uh, send referral. If they were not a member of my referral um, network, I can add them by sending them a request. If I just want to, you know, shark tank it, just throw it out there to all 32 people on this list, I can broadcast the referral and then they could submit reasons why I should choose them to me. Or I can just click on like Sandy, clicking on her information is going to her connect profile, she does a lot of business on referrals. So you can see that she is a much more, much, much more 
uh, in, uh, completed than mine. So uh, that is an example of how it should look as opposed to just talking about tacos like this guy. So this is how you could uh, find agents based on their production uh, and, you know, or sort by any sort of criteria that you might need. Uh, what you can also do while I'm at it is under um, production, uh, let, me, uh, let me reload this page. Because really what we love to do is track what we call referral patterns. If you want to start to grow your business, finding out where uh, people who live here are going and people who want to move here, where are they coming from? One of the ways we can do that is through these uh, patterns of migration. So we're gonna to go to referral uh, pattern. So I just clicked on the arrow by production, go down to referral patterns. And now what they're gonna to start to show us is uh, for this is first to start the referrals out. We have uh, um, somebody in this market center and it's going to be referred out to somebody else in a different market center. The top 20 results are showed. Chicago is number one. I imagine that will continue to be the case because we do have a couple of former Chicago residents as agents here in this office. Uh, Orlando Park, Illinois. I imagine that that is the same group of agents. Uh, Portland, Maine, Newburyport, Reading, Arizona. Whew. Orlando, Florida. So uh, it just tells you when uh, we're sending referrals out, these are where uh, most likely this is where our clients are looking to move. So what you should be doing is adding to your referral network in these market centers. So you can actually just sort, just like we just did, you can sort by you know people's production or whatever you wanna sort by and find agents that you feel like would be good referral partners for yourself and add them to your referral network. You can also see where we are getting our referrals from. Most often these are buyers uh, coming to the area. Newburyport, Portsmouth, Braintree, Newton, Bedford, New Hampshire, Milton, Rhode Island, uh, Middletown, Rhode Island, I'm from Middletown, Connecticut, so I should know that, uh, and you know, so on. So if you were looking to grow a business, these are the market centers where you really should be looking to get um, a referral partner in. So uh, same deal, I would just recommend, uh, you know, going to these, um, you know, these areas and finding the agent using the same sorting on the map that I already showed you. All right, so uh, unfortunately, Central Connecticut doesn't have one here, which is my, my old neck of the woods. And so that's how you can grow your business using referrals get your connect profile up to snuff more like sandy mcduffie than ryan gilmartin uh, and then start to find um potential partners based on just playing the ads based on where our business is coming from or if we're likely to give a referral out where we are referring to all right and the way you can do that is on the map through these referral patterns All right. Man, this goes a lot faster when I don't have to deal with questions. Next up is dun, 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 reports. And agents do not like this, even though it is incredibly useful. So in reports, first off, you open right up into the dashboard. This tells me how many people I have, how many contacts, how many leads I have, blah, blah, blah. I can compare this and tackle that on to other agents. I'm better than you are. 
I can see where my leads are coming from. Uh, for my database, I can see how many have phone numbers, email addresses, mailing addresses, and so on, neighborhood, home anniversaries, birthdays, and blah, blah, blah. If you have a team, uh, you know, the, the breakdown there as well. We can go over to reports. And you can do three options. The database report, which is similar to what we just saw in the dashboard, tells you how your database ranks compared to other agents. Your goals report, which is how are you doing compared to your goals, which we'll get to in a moment. And the opportunities report. In goals, really what you want to do is first go to your goal settings. And in goal settings, there is what we call a Kelly guide, just a step-by-step -step tutorial where you will kind of reverse engineer things to figure out how many transactions you need to do to hit your financial goals based on your projected expenses for the year. Remember at Keller Williams, we're not just looking at our gross income. There's a huge push for you to pay attention to your net income. That is after you paid Gary, after you paid Jason, uh, and after you paid whatever business expenses you have, what do you take home? And they even have a way for you to, you know, take the taxes out to us and how much you want to put in your pocket each year. Once you've done that, you can then track your goals, your performance to those goals. You can see that they're constantly updating. Lead routing is for teams, but what this is is to uh, determine how you want leads that come in to be distributed to the agents on your team. Email reports is just an overview of the emails you're sending out and how often they are opened, replied to, unsubscribe, yes, zero. Marked as spam, yes, zero. And texts and calls uh, specifically using um, your own uh, performance and uh, your Twilio account if you are using that. So these, that's, that's pretty much all that there really is for reports. What I would say is agents tend to be very shy about entering their goals and then staying on top of it. So uh, I know, you know, this year uh, um, up through uh, April, I was about, uh, let's say 22% of the way um, to my goals. Thankfully I had a nice uh, May, have a great June. So I should be up to this range right here, right, right at the right time too. So uh, it's a way for you to keep on track of your business, figuring out if you're hitting your goals. And if you're not, where are you falling short? Is it with the appointments kept, the appointments set, and so on. All right. You can also have your database uh, scores and things like that, your health, uh, right here on the dashboard so that you can see how you are doing compared to your goals. I'm... See, I'm halfway to my uh, my goals in um, closed units and so on. So kind of give you an idea of, of where you want to be. And that is pretty much it. Down the road, we will add a Teams uh, section to this particular class, which is one of the reasons why it's a little shorter than some of the others. Also, a lack of questions coming in. Uh, we'd be doing that as well. Um, but, uh, and, sorry, bold here, and, and we will be restarting this entire course next Wednesday, starting with class one. So 
If you've already taken some of the other classes, uh, maybe you took class two and three, want to do class one while we're starting over all over again. And then guess what? In July, we'll do it all over again after that too. So it just keeps on going and going and going. Uh, so if you miss any one of these classes, like class four, you can always uh, catch up um, next month.